Hi, this is Craig Landrum, and today I'm delivering a presentation called A Better Country, The Life and Legacy of the Spy, James Armistead Lafayette. That's the answer. Who is James Armistead Lafayette? Well, let me start with the story. There's a statue in Prospect Park, as you can see in the picture here. You have the uh, uh, Marquis Lafayette, you have his horse, and you have a servant here who's being nipped by the horse. So on the statue, if you go see it, you will see his name, you will see the horse's name, but you will not see the servant's name. An article I read says that there's an unassuming slave standing beside the French general and his horse. Right. This has caused frustration for many black Americans living in New York because they know who it is. This is James Armstead Lafayette. This is the great hero of the Battle of Yorktown. Given the statue, they won't even put the name of the human being standing beside the horse, but they will put the name of the horse. There is some frustration there. James Armstead Lafayette was an American hero. He was a spy who risked everything to get crucial information back to Washington and Lafayette back to the Battle of Yorktown. Without him, there would not have been an American victory in the Battle of Yorktown. Let's take a look at his life, his career, and his legacy to see what he has offered in United States history. First with his biography. He was born in slavery around 1748 to William Lafayette. He begged permission of his master to go serve the American army, and so his master uh, sent him to the Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, the Marquis de Lafayette turned him, to, him, to, turned him into a spy, and he was recruited uh, to spy specifically against the British, uh, the British in the South. He was an extremely useful agent. He got some incredibly impressive information. He intercepted information about troop movement that allowed Washington and Lafayette to block reinforcements. There's about 10,000 British, but the, the Americans were able to maneuver to block those reinforcements from getting to Yorktown, thus ensuring an American victory at Yorktown. Yorktown was won partly because of his excellent reports. I have a letter here from Washington, uh, excuse me, to Washington, from the General Lafayette. I have several selections here, but the one I focus on is the first picture I showed you. Right here in this sentence here, I will highlight it for you. I'm not a good highlighter, I apologize. But you see there, he's talking about intelligences or information that he received from a servant that he'd once mentioned. Now, he's not mentioning the servant by name because he wants to protect him. But within the context, within the dates, you can probably guess that the servant he is talking about is James Armstead. So he mentions that he's an excellent fellow, a sensible fellow, and his report was corroborated by deserters, and with that information, Lafayette and Washington were able to block the reinforcements and were able to win the battle of time. Let's talk a bit about his nickel legacy, because all we have is this information that he passed to Lafayette. That's it. However, there has been a lot of uh, mythology and romanization that's been perfect around his character. And this is what this is due mostly to 19th century romantics. Armistead has become a figure of mythology. Some stories have been made up over time. For example, there's one story in which Armistead met General Cornwallis at the, at the, the signing of the uh, treaty at Yorktown, the signing of the surrender rather. There is no evidence that Cornwallis even knew James Armistead, none at all. Just we know that he was in the British camp, we know that he was in the position to hear information because the information was relayed by him to Lafayette. But we have no idea whether or not he is actually a personal servant to Lord Cornwallis or not. There's also rumors that he worked with the traitor Benedict Arnold. However, we also know that's not we also know that's that's not confirmed. That's a part of the myth. Some sources exaggerate his proximity to Cornwallis and to Arnold because they like the idea of a slave tricking these great generals. And it might be true. It might be true. This is very hard to document that from the evidence we have. And I think if we rely on the myths, it cheapens the legacy of this great American patriot. His name and how he got his liberty is very interesting. He was not allowed his liberty because he was a spy and not a soldier. It was a technicality. But upon, upon the end of the Battle of Yorktown, most other black slaves who fought they, they did not. They, they did receive their freedom, but Lafayette, or excuse me, Armistead did not. 
he actually had to have General Lafayette to help him. General Lafayette helped him appeal for his liberty after um, several unsuccessful attempts. Finally, in 1789, he got his freedom. Or uh, 1786, excuse me. He named himself Lafayette to honor his general. And you see an interesting duality in the man. His given name is James. His first last name was his master. His second last name was the general who freed him from his first master. Very interesting. Black soldiers and spies in the Revolutionary War were a divided people. They were divided during the war between loyalties to America and the promise of freedom by the British. James chose to fight for a country that chose to keep him enslaved. He's heroic. He's, he is really a true American. In conclusion, who is James Armstead Lafayette? He is an American hero that deserves recognition. He deserves to have his name upon a statue. He deserves to have a statue all for himself. Although our, though we don't have much information about him, but we do have painted a very clear picture of a man who risked everything for a country, for a hope of a better country, a country where there would be no slaves and no masters, a country that he would see later in his life when he became a landowner and when he became a leader in the community himself. To end this, I want to talk about some recommended sources that you might find interesting. The first is the memoirs and correspondence and manuscripts of General Lafayette. This is fascinating because we see lots of letters, and there are several letters that mention a mysterious informant that is undoubtedly uh, his, his servant James. A second source, that is a primary source, is the legislative petition for James. Uh, this is the petition he submitted to the, to the Virginia House of Burgesses when he wanted his freedom. He submitted it, and had the endorsement of Lafayette is a very interesting read and it corroborates the evidence we see from the letters sent back and forth to Lafayette in Washington. What Lafayette signed when he uh, petitioned to have his former servant freed to directly correlates to what we see, and it creates a very compelling story. Another sort, a couple of other sources you might enjoy, African Americans in the early Republic, 1789-1831. This article by Gary B. Nash was crucial to help me understand what many black soldiers faced during the Revolutionary War and in the early days of the country was a very fascinating indeed, especially as it relates to racial relations in America. Uh, the second article is the one that I read off with in this presentation, The Invisible Black Man on Prospect Park Statue by Summer Brennan. This source is amazing. It's a wonderfully good article. Uh, you can Google it, you can find it very easily. It expresses a lot of frustration and it's an interesting commentary to the situation we see here in America today where people are wanting to tear down Confederate statues, wanting to tear down elements of our history, and yet there are still elements of our history that are going unrecognized that need to be recognized. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I enjoyed studying about uh, James Armistead Lafayette. I learned a lot, and I quickly gained a new hero in the American Revolutionary War. Thank you so much.